Shalom Israel. This is a video about interracial marriage as an Israelite. Are you allowed to marry people of other nations as an Israelite? First, let's go to Deuteronomy 7, verse 3 through 6. Verse 3, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughters thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. So the scriptures say that you're not to make marriages with them. You're not to give your daughters to them, of another nation, neither are you to take on someone from another nation uh, into your family. And if you do, it, they will turn away from following the Most High, that they may serve other gods. Okay, we only serve the God of Israel. We do not serve any other God, and the nations have their own God. So if you don't want to make the Most High angry that he may destroy you, then you need to stay away from people of other nations. Verse five, but thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art a holy people. That means you are separate from them. Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So the Most High has chosen Israel, the black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, to be a, cho a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Let me say that again. Above all people upon the face of the earth. So the Most High is letting you know there's no equality that the Most High has chosen Israel, the Israelites, the Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans of Negro descent to be his people. And that we are above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. Now, there are other nations that think that they're better than us, but we're the top dog. Okay? Don't let anybody tell you different. Some will try to act like, you know, we're worse than other nations. But when you look at the other nations, you will see that their other nations have done a lot more evil than Israel. Okay, you have other nations that kill millions. They kill millions of Indians. They kill millions of so-called black people. Hundreds of millions, threw them off ships into the ocean, hung them. Fed them the alligators, split them with horses, and they all did that in the name of Christianity. Okay, so don't ever let anyone tell you that we are the worst people on earth. First Kings eleven, verse one through thirteen. We're gonna get into a few verses dealing with marriages and whether we can marry them. Okay. 1 Kings 11, verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Chinese women, Ammonites, Japanese women, Edomites, white women, Zidonians and Hittites, Africans, and of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon claimed unto these in love. So King Solomon had went against the Most High and married women of other nations. And he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. The wisest man to ever live 
had his heart turned away. And if you think that the wisest man had his heart turned away and you can do it without having your heart turned away, then you're sadly mistaken. For it came to pass when Solomon was old and his wives turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. And Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Amorites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord, as did his David, his father. See, his father, uh, David, he kept the laws. It said he was perfect. He said only one sin that King David did. But King Solomon, he decided to have multiple wives or many wives. Verse 7, then did Solomon build a high place for Shemash, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he all did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrifice unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord of God of Israel, which had a, appeared unto him twice. And he commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes. See, we as Israel, we have to keep the Most High's covenant and his statutes, which I commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant." Notwithstanding this thy day, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. So he was telling King Solomon that he was going to split the kingdom into two kingdoms. That's where we get the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was called the uncircumcision. They were called the Gentiles inside of the New Testament. Um, a lot of Israelites uh, on different nations always uh, say that the uh, Gentiles in the New Testament are the other nations, but a lot of places they are referring to the northern kingdom Israelites, those that went off. Okay, Now let's go to Ezra 10 verse 1 to 13. Now, when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And Shekinah, the son of Jehal, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, we have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. So they knew that they have taken, they sinned against the Most High by taking women that were not Israelite women. Okay. What you have is Israelites marrying women of other nations. Now you have a lot of wicked Israelites who try to use, uh, let's say, Ruth or something like that to say you can. Uh, he married someone out of another nation. First thing, you're not him. And secondly, you don't understand the circumstances behind uh, what happened with Ruth. So I'm not really here to go into all of that, but I'm just here to tell you that it states that our forefather, King Solomon, sinned for having strange wives. And it says that we're not to have strange wives of other nations. It also says that we have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Verse three, now therefore I, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives. So they made a covenant that all of them who had strange wives of other nations that they were all going to put those wives away. They're going to divorce. See, the scriptures say what God put together, let no man put up, put up under. See, the Most High didn't put that together. 
lust and your own what your own desires put that together. A lot of us sometimes we forget that it says what the most high put together, let no man put up under. Every marriage is not of the most high. Okay. And such as are born of them. So they didn't just get rid of their wives, they got rid of their children and gave them over to their wives. Why? Because the women teach the children and they're going to teach them about their God. So they said they were going to also turn over the kids to the mom and divorce her. According to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble at the commandment of the God, of our God. See, they tremble at the commandments. You have Israelites that don't tremble at the commandments. They let lust and their desires uh, overpower the commandments of our God. And let it be done according to the law. See, the law states you cannot marry other nations. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee, be of good courage, and do it. Then arose Ezra and made the chief priests, the Levites, and all Israel to swear they should do according to this word, and they swear. So they all made a a, a, a covenant that they would not, they would get rid of the wives and the kids. And Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of John, jo, John Hanan and the son of he, Eliashib. And when he came hith, thither, he did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. See, Israel mourned when they saw Israelites breaking the law. Now we don't have any feelings. We see women wearing pants. We see women out of order. We see men without fringes. Women uh, uh, not calling their husband Lord because they don't want to. We see all kind of wickedness. And it doesn't mourn us. You should be mourning when you go and see women with pants on. Or men with bald heads. Or anything that's a sin against the most high. It should mourn you. It says, for he mourned because of transgression of them that had, carried, that had been carried away. And they made proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem unto the children of the captivity. That they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem. They, the children of Israel, the children of the captivity should gather themselves together. Not all nations, because you have Israelites that want to go and teach all nations. Because they, they are unlearned on the scriptures. They err not knowing the scriptures. And they think they're supposed to be out there uh, proclaiming to the, to the real Gentiles when the law was given to Israel. Okay? Verse 8, And that whosoever would not come within three days according to the counsel of the princes of the, and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. You see, Ezra didn't play. He didn't give them 10 years to do it. He didn't give them six months or six months. He didn't give them three years. Hey, when you feel like changing, change. Hey, when you feel like wearing fringes, wear fringes. Hey, when you feel like uh, uh, wearing a dress, wear a dress. No. He gave him three days. Okay. Sometimes we in Israel, we give everyone too much time to get this up right. Okay. A lot of camps give their, the people part of their camp too long to get right. And then it's three years later and they still haven't gotten right and they let them. Okay. And that whosoever should come should not come within three days according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all their substance shall be forfeited. In other words, hey, you, you got to give up everything. If you don't do it, you got to give up everything. And himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was a ninth month on the 20th day of the month and all 
the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. So they were trembling about having to give up their Edomite wives and their Ammonite wives with the long, pretty hair. They were uh, trembling about that. So you have a lot of Israel. They love dealing with women of other nations. Israelite women are not good enough. A lot of them will set up camps, start teaching about the Gentiles because they want to bring in some of these other nations because they really don't love their own people. Some of them bring it in Israel. Some of them want to go out and teach Israel. Some of them want to do all kinds of things. Verse 10. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase thy trespass against Israel. Now therefore make confession to the Lord God of your fathers and do this pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. See, you are to separate yourself from the people of the land, not bring them into your congregation, not make them your wife, your concubine or anything. You are to separate from them. You're not out there to teach them. You're to separate yourself from them. Then all the congregants answered and said with a loud voice, as thou hast said, so must we do. So they weren't fighting it. They weren't, they weren't wicked Israelites that fight against keeping the law, come up with excuses so that they can do, they can break laws, come up with excuses to do birthdays, to do Christmas, to do whatever. Hey, you can do Christmas or you can do Christmas as long as you don't have a tree in your house. Oh, you can do birthdays as long as you don't have a cake or don't have candles on the cake or something stupid like that. If you can do birthdays with no cake, you can do Christmas with no Christmas tree. They are all wicked. People, you people need to learn that it's not important enough for your salvation to do a birthday. There's not, it's not that important. Okay. Deuteronomy. Let's go to verse 13. But the people are many and it is a time for much rain and we are not able to stand without. Neither is this a work of one day or two. For we are many that have transgressed in this thing. So they transgressed many of them. The good thing is that they understood, they transgressed, they repented, and they moved on. You have a lot of Israel who don't want to repent. They get mad when you bring out the law. Okay? Deuteronomy 23, verse 3. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. During the time of Ruth, the Israelite kings were not keeping the law, okay? During the time of Ruth, that is one of the main reasons why certain things were done because of that. We'll go into that for a second, but I'm not really going deep into that about Ruth and the Moabite. But it says that an Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation. If Ruth, for those who believe that Ruth was a Moabite, she cannot enter into the congregation. That's not a good excuse to say you can deal with other nations. Because Ruth, it says a more it's Ruth, the more if you want to take it that she a Moabite or whether you take it that she was an actual Israelite. Whichever way that you believe, the point is that Moabites are not able to get into the kingdom or go into the congregation, meaning they can't come into the body. Okay? At forever. They can't come into the congregation, meaning they cannot go into our temples and synagogue or our temples forever. Judges 21, verse 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. 
See, during that time, in the judges' time, during the time of Ruth, everybody did what they want. If they wanted to marry a woman of another nation, they did it because they, there was no king in Israel. So everybody did what they wanted. So you'll see a lot of things that were done that, were, or that wasn't in the law. The law states you cannot marry someone that is not an Israelite. Ezra 9. Okay, it says, Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the land, doing according to their abominations, even the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons. So these priests, Levites and all, they were taking on all these other nations. They were giving their daughters over them, taking their sons. But they weren't supposed to. The law states they couldn't do it. So that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of the land. See, what you have to realize is that you have holy seed. An Israelite man has holy seed. Why are you wanting to give over your holy seed to other nations, to dogs? The scriptures say that the other nations are dogs. Why are you? That's like having a, 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 uh, Wattwalla, a full bred Wattwalla, and breeding it with a sooner off the street. You have good seed, good stock, and you're breeding with something with no papers that's a sooner. Maybe it has five or ten different mutts in it, and you're over there breeding with it. That's, that's, that doesn't make sense. You breed a Wattwalla that has papers with a Wattwalla that has papers, so you have a good bloodline. And it says that they mingle, they have, we who have holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of the land, those other nations that don't have holy seed. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. So the prince and the rulers have been the chief people in this trespass. The priests, the Levites, the people of Israel, they have trespassed against the Most High by mingling their seed. You can't do that. Verse 3, and when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair of my head and my beard and sat down astonished. They were amazed. A lot of times we in Israel are not amazed. I'm amazed when I see a woman that's been in the truth for a long period of time still with a dress or pants on. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me to see Israelites still doing birthdays and they call themselves Israel, Israelites. It's amazing. It's amazing to me to see Israelites with uh, no beard or Israelite with no hair on his head and been in for long periods of time, over six months, three months, a year, two years, five years. And they still don't have a bald head or still not wearing fringes. It's astonishing to me. And it should be astonishing to you like, wow. How are you? A, you call yourself an Israelite and you're still doing Christmas. Are you still eating pork? Are you still doing birthdays? Verse four, then were assembled unto me everyone that trembled at the words of the God of Israel because of the transgression. See, it's a transgression, it's a sin of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. He's just sat there. For hours just looking in amazement. I have done that. I have seen camps that allow all kind of wickedness, and I'm amazed. And when you say something, they are, they get upset because you're bringing it out, and they say, "Hey, you should leave them alone. They need time." I'm amazed. I sit back, I go home, and I'm just amazed how people just allow, like this is the Christian church. People to just be in sin and they don't say anything or they say something, and just leave it alone and let them be that way for years. It's amazing to me. I'm astonished. 
Verse five, and at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God and said, oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespass has grown up unto the heavens. See, he was astonished. He didn't even want to lift his head up to the most high. He said, for our iniquities. He didn't say my iniquities. He said our, even though he was doing what was right, he looked at it as his people. He said our iniquities. He was astonished. He didn't even want to. He looked at it as I am sinning also because my people are. See, we don't think of we don't have a brotherhood. We need to be more uh, more close with the brothers and the sisters and let them know when they're in sin. As Ezra did. Since the days of our fathers have we been in a great trespass against uh, uh, trespass until this day. And for our iniquities, we have we, our kings and our priests have delivered into the hand of the kings of the land to the sword, to captivity and to the spoil and the confusion of face as it is this day. And now for a little space, grace have been showed uh, from the Lord, our God, to leave us a remnant to escape. And to give us a nail in the holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little revealing in our bondage. See, he gave a remnant to escape. It's amazing. For we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage but have extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia to give us a reveling to set up the house of our God and to repair the desolations thereof and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And now, O oh, our God, that shall we say this after this, for we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded by thy servants, the prophets, saying the land, until which we ye go to possess it is an unclean land with fifth with the fifthness of the people of the land with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. And therefore give not your daughters. Let me say that again. Give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take this is verse twelve, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth forever. You don't, you don't have to seek their peace or their wealth forever. That ye be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for inheritance to your children forever. See, you're not supposed to be uh, mingling with them. Okay? What it's saying is not, not to make any type of treaty with them. Okay? Because they're going to break every treaty that you do anyway. They did it with the Indians. So don't try to make some treaty with them thinking that you're going to become strong by making some agreement with, you know, how they used to uh, give their daughter or take their son on. So they'd be all one family and everything and, and, and become strong by by marrying into another family. They say, don't do that. Don't do that. You're only to marry and mingle with Israel, with your people. Verse 13, after and after all that is come upon us, our evil deeds and our great trespass, see, it's a great trespass, seeing that thou, our God, has punished us less than our iniquities deserve. See, we deserve death. You have the, mo the God of Israel, Yahweh, our power, has given us the kingdom or is going to give us the kingdom. The least you can do is keep his commandments. Don't marry strange wives. Don't bring them into your into your congregation because they're going to turn you away. Whether you marry them, whether you bring them into your congregation, they're going to get you to soften up. How can you how can you speak the truth when you have other nations right there with you? You're going to soften up. And has given us such deliverance as this. 
Verse 14, should we again break thy commandment and join in a affinity with the people of these abominations? Are we to break God, the most high's commandments? Are we to break the most high's commandments and join with these other nations? Would if not thou be angry with us till thou hast consumed us so that there should be no remnant nor escaping? O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous, for we remain yet escaped as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespass, for we cannot stand before thee because of this. Okay? We can't even stand before the Lord. We have trespassed against the Most High, a lot of Israel, a lot of Israelites, because of lust, because of them wanting to be with women of other nations, because we want them in our congregation. Because we want to teach them. Okay. When you have your own people out there hurting. What do you care to go out there and teach some other nation? A lot of them say I'm doing what because the Most High told me to do. He didn't tell you anything. That's you. It ain't have nothing to do with the Most High. Joshua 23 verse 11 through 13. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves. That ye love the Lord your God. Else if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations. See, the most high say, if you love the Lord, you won't cleave to the remnant of these nations. See, we had a, a remnant when we came out of Egypt and they became great over us. He said, don't, don't cleave to the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, even the, the nation, the people that are among you. Don't cleave to those people that are among you. And shall make marriages with them and go into them and have sex with them. And they and they to you know for certainty that the Lord your God will not will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. He said, if you continue to deal with these women of other nations, to bring them in, to deal with them, let them remain among you, bringing them into your congregation saying that you got to do that because that's what the scriptures say. It says don't do that. They're not supposed to be around you. Only your people. Okay? But they shall be snares and traps unto you. See, a lot of these women from other nations are, are traps to you. Yeah, a lot of black men marrying uh, Edomite women and women of other nations think they have it better. They are a trap to you. And scourges in the side. And thorns in your eyes until ye perish from off this good land which Lord your God has given thee. See, a lot of them, they wouldn't listen. They just had to deal with these other nations. They had to deal with the women of other nations. They use all kind of excuses. Uh, they can have concubines. They, you know, this and that. And any reason that they can because of lust. Some are because of lust. Some of them, they don't, they don't really care about the people. That's why they want to go out and teach the other nation. They think you, uh, you as Israel don't really listen. So they want to go teach someone who listen, like Edomites or some other nations, and bring them in. They wicked. These Israelites are wicked that want to go out and teach other nations. Okay? We know that our people are, 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 are bad. We know that we, they don't listen. But we're still to go out and speak to them, even if they hear or forbear. That is what we're supposed to do. We are to go to the people of the captivity, not the people of the other nations. Nehemiah 13, verse 23 to 27. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod. Those are Africans of Ammon and of Moab. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language. They couldn't speak Hebrew because they had married these women and the women taught them their language. And they couldn't even speak the language of their father, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote them. And he, he in other words, he hit a couple of them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair. See? You got Israel now. They not. They not about that life. They not about telling their people, "You wicked," or that you need to uh, wear fringes, or you need to put your hair on. They won't do that. 
Indeed, right here, what did Nehemiah say? I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them. He, he got in fights with them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? See, so so King Solomon sinned by doing this. Dealing with the other nations, he sinned. But you see, Nehemiah didn't play. He wasn't soft on his people. A lot of Israel is soft on his people. He'll let them stick around sinning. And, 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 and it's, it's okay. And you bring it out, they'll get mad at you. They tell you to leave it alone. I know the person has been uh, sinning for two years, three years, four years. Just leave them alone. They, you know, we in captivity. Well, they were in captivity. But it didn't matter. See, a real man is going to uh, going to set it straight. Nehemiah, he almost, he, he, he got in fights with him. He pulled out the hair. He pretty much said, Negro, you're going you, you gonna to keep these laws. Because it's, it's going to be bad for all of Israel. But you got Israelites now, they ain't, they ain't about that. Yet among many nations has there no king like him who was beloved of his God and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken, un hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives. See, it's a transgression. It's a sin to marry outside of your nation. There's no excuse. Don't want to hear about any Israelite that married outside his nation. It's still a sin. Doesn't matter whether it's Moses that married outside his nation. God allowed that. The Most High allowed that. Yahweh allowed for Moses to do that because he was away and there was no Israelites around. So some people were special during that time. Are you around where there's no Israelites? Are there no Israelites around for you to marry? That was the situation with Moses. There was no Israelites. He had killed one of the Egyptians and he escaped into the land where Africans were. So he didn't have anyone to marry that was of Israel. So he, the most time, allowed it for him. You don't have that excuse. You're not on some desolate island and all the people on that, on that island are some other nation. So you can't use the excuse. The scriptures say it's a sin to marry anyone or deal with anyone. Not just marry them, deal with them, concubine, uh, uh, just having sex with them. Whatever excuse you want to use, you're not to deal with them in that manner. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his sons, nor their, his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, and they may serve other gods, so will anger the Lord be, so the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art a holy people again. Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people. See, you're special. You can't deal with trash. You can't deal with dogs. People unto himself above all people that's on the face. You're above all people that's on the first of the, of the on the face of the earth. Let's go to Tobit 4, verse 12 through 13. Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of their thy father. See, it said, avoid, beware of all whoredom. See, it's it's a sin, it's whoredom to deal with someone that's not out of your nation, outside of your the seed of your father, and take not strange woman to wife which is not of thy father's tribe, for we are the children of the prophets, nor Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred. See, you're the married wives of your own kindred and were blessed in their children and their seed shall inherit the land. Verse 13, now therefore, my son, love thy brethren, 
See, a lot of you all want to love the other nations. Y'all want to be a light unto the other nations, thinking that the Gentiles are the, that it's talking about when it said light unto the Gentiles. It's talking about the other nations. The light unto the Gentiles is your people. It's your brethren. It's your northern kingdom Israelites. Okay. Now, therefore, my son, love thy brethren and despise not in thy heart, my brethren. Thy, the sons and daughters of thy people, not of the Gentiles people, but of thy people in not taking a wife of them for in pride is destruction and much trouble and in lewdness is decay and great want for lewdness is the mother of famine. Now let's go to first Ezra 8 verse 69 through 74. The nation of Israel, the prince, the pe the priests, the Levites, I'm not to put away from them the strange people of the land, nor the pop, uh, pollution of the Gentiles to wit, and the Canaanites, Hittites, Parasites, Jebusites, and Moabites, Egyptians, and Edomites. So whites is all kind of people that, that we hadn't put away for. Both they have their sons, have married with their daughters, and have holy seed is mixed with the strange people of the land. So our holy seed, again, is mixed with the people of the land. And from the beginning of this matter, the rulers and the great men have been partakers of this iniquity. As, and as soon as I had heard these things, I rent my clothes and the holy garments and pulled off the hair of, of my head and, and beard and sat me down sad and very heavy. So all they that were then moved at the word of the Lord God of Israel assembled unto me, which I mourned for their iniquity. But I sat still full of heaviness until the evening sacrifice. Then rising up from the fast with my clothes and the holy garments rent and bowing my knees and stretching forth my hands unto the Lord. And I said, O Lord, I have, I am confounded in the shame for thy face. He's ashamed for his own people. Why? Because they are mixing royal seed with dogs. A lot of people don't like that, but that's what the Most High, that's what Yahweh Shah, Christ called the other nations. Dogs. Let's go to Matthew 15, 21 through 29. Matthew 15, verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Zidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, on me, O Lord, thy son of David. She knew exactly who he was. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil, but she was not an Israelite woman. But he answered her not a word. He didn't even say anything to her. Why? Because the word is for Israel. It's not for some Canaanite woman. It's not for the other nations. A lot of Israelites think we're supposed to be teaching the other nations. And being a light to them, or being or talking to them and show being a light or whatever. But he answered not a word. And he, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried up after her. Even the disciples said, Get her away from us. See, we don't have that attitude now. We want them to come to come to us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ, Yahweh, I say he's only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I don't know why a lot of Israelites don't understand that. He's not sent to the nations. He was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, period. Verse 25, then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat. It's not right to take the children's bread. See, the word of God is the children's bread, is the children of Israel's bread. That's for us. And to cast it to dogs. He called the woman a dog. He said, it's not right for me to, to take this word of God, this Bible, and to cast it to a dog. And she said truth. She said, I know I'm a dog. But Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs from that fall from the master's table. She said, yes, but a dog, even a dog can get a couple crumbs, right? Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And, his, and her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And Jesus parted from this and came nigh. See, it says, and then Jesus departed. She went her way. She didn't stay. 
and go with Jesus or go with Yahweh Shah. She didn't stay. Why? Because it wasn't for her. She just wanted a blessing. It's like going out in the street and some uh, someone homeless asks you for some money and you give it to them. They go their way. That don't mean they can make it into the kingdom with you. That don't mean that you're supposed to be teaching them because they because because Yahweh Shah uh, blessed her daughter and healed the daughter. Now a lot of Israel try to find a reason to, for the for the uh, for other nation to get in. And they say, "Oh, well, she well well the most well uh, Yahweh Shah or Christ he uh, he healed the daughter." What does that mean? Okay, and I've given people money. So what does that mean? That don't mean they get an inheritance. That doesn't mean now they're a part of my will. No, my kids are. See, we have the will. We have the covenant. We have the covenant with the most high. That woman did not. But if you want, to, if you bless her, if some Canaanite woman came and said, hey, I'm, my child is, is sick and, and you got some medicine and you give it to her, that, you can do that if you chose to. That doesn't mean she's got an inheritance with, with you. That doesn't mean you're going to give her part of your kingdom. No. But because Israel want the other nation in so bad, some Israelites will try to use that and say that, 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 that we're supposed to be teaching them now. Or we supposed to, she went her way. And then the Yahweh went his way. She didn't remain because it wasn't for her. She took her blessing and kept it moving. She took the money and kept it moving. Because it's not for her. She doesn't have a covenant. She doesn't have the, a, a, a card that says she's an Israelite. There are 12 gates. And the names on those gates is the name of the 12 tribes of Israel only. It's not a 13th gate for the Gentiles. So you can waste your time trying to teach them and do all what you say. And oh, well, they're going to be taught later on. That's later. Right now, you're to go to your people. And Jesus departed this and came nigh into the Sea of Galilee and went up into the into a mountain and sat down there. Ezekiel 3, verse 10 and 11. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I speak shall speak unto thee, receive in thy heart and hear with thine ears. So it says, Son of man, all the words that I speak, receive it in thine heart and hear with thine ears. Verse 11, and go. Get thee them of the captivity. It didn't say give it to the Gentiles. He said, every word I say, give it to the people of the captivity. That's the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not no Gentiles. Unto the children of thy people. Not the children of the Gentiles people, but the children of thy people. And speak unto them. Who's the them? The children of Israel. And tell them. Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, whether those children of Israel will hear or, or walk, keep walking past and forbear. But it doesn't say anything about going to teach the other nations. It's for you to teach your people, whether they hear or forbear. But we so messed up in the head. That we want to go out, some of some Israelite camps want to go out and teach the other nations instead of the people of the captivity, as thus saith the Most High. Exodus 11, verse, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that he may know how the Lord, that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptian and Israel. It says against the See, here's the thing. A lot of people, because they're not really. See, if you're military, you understand rank and structure. OK, when it says not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, it's not. Listen, the other nations are not supposed to speak any evil of the children of Israel. Why? Because we at the top of the food chain, we're the general and a private. What does a private say to the general? Yes, sir. That's it. So a, a private cannot say, I don't like what order you gave. I don't like what you're saying, General. Or he will get court martials and kicked out or go to prison. Because there's rank. And Israel is at the top of the pole. 
So you, uh, another nation speaking evil of you is against the scriptures. They can't speak any evil of you because they are under you. A captain doesn't talk back to a general. But a lot of don't understand that. You can't even talk against our beats. You got a dog. No other nation can't even talk about your animals, man. We're gods. We need to start acting like it. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that's upon the face of the earth. We're above all people that's on the face of the earth. And we are a holy people chosen by the Most High as a special people unto himself. Deuteronomy 14, verse 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Why? Because the laws were given us. And some people think we're peculiar. Why are you wearing those fringes? Why you have the beard? Why you don't keep Christmas? Why you don't keep birthdays? What's wrong with you? Your kids are going to be, uh, uh, are not going to be able to socialize because you aren't doing Christmas and all the other kids are doing Christmas and all the other kids are doing birthdays. We are a peculiar people unto him above all the nations that are upon the earth. We are the top nation. First Peter two, verse nine and two, 10, but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood. See, we royalty and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. We're the chosen generation. We're royalty, which in past time were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. See, we have received mercy from the most high. That's how we're here. And we're a holy nation. We need to start acting like stop doing what the nations do. Stop wearing, uh, doing birthdays. Stop doing all the stuff the nations do. And come up with excuses on why it's okay to do birthdays. Hey, well, you know, as long as you don't do a cake, as uh, long as you don't put uh, candles on it, it's okay. It's a wicked holiday, just like Christmas. It's a wicked custom. For the customs of the people are vain. For one take up a cake. And put candles on it to the goddess of the heavens. Wicked Israelites will push that doctrine that they can do birthdays. Only a wicked Israelite. And we have to call it out. Second Ezra 6 verse 54 through 59. And after these, Adam also, who thou made of Lord of all thy creatures, of, of him come we all. See, we all come from Adam. And the people also who thou have chosen. See, so you have all the nations that come from Adam, and then also the chosen people, the children of Israel that came out of Adam. All this have I spoken unto thee, O Lord, because thou made the world for our sake. The whole world is for Israel. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou have said they are nothing. See, the other nations are nothing. Why do you want to go out? And, I mean, it's just a bit it really perplexing to hear Israelites want to go out there and teach other nations and bring them into their congregation. It's really strange to me. Why would you want to bring dogs into your congregation? Why would you want to bring what the Most High calls nothing into your congregation? But be like unto spittle. Why would you want to bring spit into your congregation or into your, your camp or to deal with spit? And hath likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. The Most High looks at the, at the nations like you carrying a bucket of water and one drip come out. And as you walk, do you go back to get that drip? No. But you got Israel want to go back and try to teach the nations. When the Most High tell you they are drops that fall from a bucket. He's telling you they nothing. What do you make think that the Most High wants you to go teach nothing? It's the, it really perplexing to me. And now, O oh Lord, behold, these heathen, see, Ezra knew they were heathen. A lot of Israel think that they could be taught, but they now are, are, are 
or maybe a Paul or, or Christ as a uh, now is bringing them in and they, they, they're no longer heathen. They're okay to go teach now, which have ever been reputed as nothing. They have always been known as nothing. Having begun to be lords over us and to devour us. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into the hands. Yes, we're given into the hands because you because we broke the most highest commandments and his laws. And you have Israelites still doing it, doing Christmas, doing birthdays, doing all kind of stuff. They want to teach the, the other nations. The other nations don't care about you. They hate your guts. You are a dummy if you want to go out and teach them. Like they're gonna sit there and listen to you. They don't care about you. Okay? Get that through your thick skull. The nations look at you as a Negro. I'll just say it like that. They can care less about you teaching them nothing. They don't want to hear about uh, uh, that you Israel and they are going to be servants to you. They don't care to hear that. The only reason that a lot of Israelites want to do that is because they want to they want to change what the scriptures are said. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? How long will we be under the nations? That's really what he's asking. How long will we be? We are your chosen. We are your firstborn. We your only begotten. We are fervent lover. How how long are we going to be under these nations? See, you got Israelites worried about the nations. Andrews understood that they were nothing. They were dogs. They were heathen. They were spit. But you got Israelites that want to go out and teach the spit. It make me want to pull my hair out or pull their hair out. First Ezra 8, verse 83 through 85. That the land which ye enter into to possess as a heritage is a land polluted with the pollution of strangers of the land, and they have filled it with their uncleanliness. Therefore, now shall ye not join your daughters unto their sons, neither shall ye take their daughters unto your sons. Moreover, ye shall never seek to have peace with them. Don't be sitting there trying to make some covenant with them that ye may be strong because you're going to be weak. You go ahead and join with them. Go ahead and join with them. Teach them. A lot of those, I call them Christian Israelites. They still have a lot of church in them. When you start hearing uh, Camp talk about uh, uh, teaching the Gentiles or teaching the other nations, they come from a Christian background, which most of us come to. But a lot of them are really still Christians on the inside. And they're trying to be a Christian Israelite. It don't match. See, the Israelites from before were straight Israelites. Watch the ones that are always talking about other camps and how wicked other camps are, or how they were wrong. They may bring up camps like One West and other camps that they they want to change the doctrine of. What you will find that those camps are really just Christians that, that understand that they Israel and they're trying to mix Christianity with Israel. Now, most camps aren't like this. Most Israel, they know that you don't do birthdays. They know it's wicked, but you have a few that don't know it. Those are more the Christian Israelite camps. They're the ones that allow you not to wear fringes, have the bald head, they don't care about that stuff. It's like, oh, well, they'll do it because they, and a lot of them, the women rule it. Those are the Christian camps. Be careful not to deal with Christian Israelites. Keep the commandments. Ecclesiasticus 12, verse 10 and 11. Never trust thine enemy. See, a lot of these camp, these Israelites, they trust their enemy. Who's your enemy? All the nations are your enemy. Who's the number one enemy? The Edomites. They're the number one. Why would you trust the word of the Most High to your enemy? Never trust thy enemy. For like as iron rusts, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself. See, a lot of the Edomites, they real humble. They pretend they humble. And then they take over. And dumb, uh, Israelites fall for it. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take 
good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hadst wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. You can't wipe away Esau. You can't wipe away the rust of Esau, the evil of Esau. There's no, you can't give him the word. It says that all of Esau, there will be none remaining from the Mount of Esau for the Most High has spoken. It says he will have a perpetual hatred toward Jacob. And that he will pay for the sins of his father. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquities of the father. Because they have done evil on earth and they have done evil against the children of Israel. Why do you keep wanting to mix yourself with the enemy? Set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stands up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or any such as come nigh wild beasts? See, I won't pity a camp that bring in some uh, other nation people because when they get bit, who can pity you? You want to be there and play with the devil and you get bit, then you deserve getting bit. I'm like the prophets of old. You deserve what you get when you want to deal with the enemy. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. How did we get to America? With ships. By the way, where, where, by the way where have I spake unto thee? Thou shalt see it no more again. And there, when you get off those ships, ye shall be sold unto thy enemy. Who were you sold to? You were sold to the Edomites. You want to go out there and teach Edomites? It says those are your enemy. The, the, the scriptures said, trust not thy enemy. Ecclesiasticus 12 verse 10. Say, tr trust, uh, never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rust, so is his wickedness. So you, the scripture tell you who your enemy are. And you want to go teach them or you want to bring them into your camp or you want to uh, teach them the laws and everything. Because now uh, you believe Paul has has allowed now for for the heathen to now get salvation or get some form of salvation or they will be, uh, you know. Yeah, they will be in the kingdom as your slave. And then they will be released. But Esau is going to be destroyed. Every single last one of them are going to be destroyed. There will be none of that nation living. For the Most High has spoken. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there thou shalt be sold unto thy enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy thee. Meaning no man will be able to get you out of that cap uh, get us out of that captivity. Many have tried, but none have been able to do that. Israel, keep the commandments in the faith of the Most High. Stay away from the other nations. Stay away from their women. If you have to do business with it, do business with them and let it be that. But don't mix with them. Don't go out there to teach them. Don't bring them into your congregation. Don't marry them because it is a sin. And with that, I say shalom.